Hey there, are you wondering how to build a memory card matching game in Java? If the answer is yes, you are in luck because you land in the right tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build a memory card matching game using Java and Java FX. This is the second part of the tutorial where we will see how to complete the game. If you would like to start the tutorial from the beginning, I highly recommend that you watch part 1. There is a link in the description and also a card that will show up at the top right corner in this video. In the previous video, we have seen how to create and configure our Java FX project. And we have also seen how to create the user interface with all the cards facing downwards. Now we will see how to make this user interface interactive. In other words, stuff happen when you click on the cards. To do so, we will add the listeners, which is basically code that will run when a specific event occurs. Let's see how the video is going to be organized. First, I will show you how you can fill up your card matrix with different images. In other words, we are going to assign an image to every card so we can display the image when someone clicks on the card. Then I will show you how to add a listener so every time you click on a card, the image underneath appears. Next, we will see how to check if the cards are equal when you turn around two cards. And last, we will see how to restart the game when you click on the Start the Game button. Perfect, without further to do, let's get started. So right now our game is empty and there is nothing behind each card. That's the first thing we need to change. Assign an image to every card, making sure we assign them in pairs. Here are the images that we are gonna use, an apple, a yellow circle, a green clover, a diamond and a heart. So five different images. I will leave a link below to each of the images so you can download them and add them to your project. To represent our card matrix, we are going to create a new class called board. This class is going to do two key things, populate the matrix with different images and check when the gain is complete. So in other words, all cards are facing upwards. So since we are representing a matrix, we are going to add a field to the class, which is going to be public and it's going to be a 2D matrix of the class cell. So I will say new cell 6 and 6, which are the dimensions of our matrix, 6 by 6. And now let's create a class cell. This class will help us keep information about the state of each cell, information like value or the image that the cell will contain, the position of the cell, meaning the row and the column in the matrix, and if the car was already guessed. And I'm going to create a constructor as well. Perfect, so now we have our matrix with cells representing each of the cars. Now let's create a function to populate this matrix. In other words, assigning an image to every card. So I will call the function populate matrix. And what does this method has to do? It will first initialize the matrix and then it will select one of the images, then pick two cells that are empty and then assign the image to each of the cells and it will keep doing this until the matrix is full okay so let's write this in java first i will initialize the matrix so i will say new cell six and six then i will create an array with all the images available which are apple circle, heart, diamond and clover. And since we are going to need to pick 
a cell randomly, I'm gonna use the random class. So I will create a random variable called random generator. Now we said that we have to keep assigning images to the cells until the matrix is full. So I'm gonna use a while loop and I will say while not is bore full, meaning while the bore is not full. And is bore full is gonna be a function that will check if the matrix is full. So let's create that function. And for now, it's gonna return always false, and we will change this later. Now, let's go back. While the matrix is not full, we need to pick an image from the array we just created. So I will pick a random number from zero to five, which is the number of images. And then I will access the image array using the generated index. So this will return an stream with one of the images. So this, this string could be apple or it could be diamond or any of the other five. Now we have to pick a random cell from the matrix. This means selecting a number from zero to six, which will be our row, and then another number from zero to six, which we will use as the column. Then, once we have our cell, what if the cell is not empty? Because we already assigned an image to it. In that case, we need to pick another cell. And to do so, I will say while the cell is not empty, so board, then the random row, then the random column, is not equal to null, I will generate another random row and another random column. And since we need to pick two random cells, I'm gonna do exactly the same for the second cell, but I will change the name of the variables to two. Also, here in the condition of the loop, we need to check that the second cell is not the same as the first one. In other words, make sure that we pick two different cells. So I will say if column one and column two are equal and the row one and the row two are equal, then we need to pick a different cell because the second cell is the same as the first cell. Once we have the two different cells, I will create a cell for the first card so new cell and then random image selected before with the random row and the random column. And the same for the second card. This will assign an image to a pair of cells in our matrix. So let's now complete the method to check if the board is full. How do we know if our matrix is full? If there is no empty spaces, that means as soon as you find a cell that is null, meaning empty, we can stop checking and return false, meaning the matrix is not full. To do so in Java, I will use two for loops to check every cell in the matrix, and here I will say if bor and then row i and column j is null, meaning the cell is empty, then return false. Otherwise, if we get to the end and no cell was null, then we can return true because it means the matrix is full. In other words, all cells have an image assigned to them, so the matrix is fully populated. Now, let's go back to the app controller class and use the board class we just created. So now this class is gonna have another field which I'm gonna call board and it's gonna be of type board. Next, in the initialize method, which is the method that is called right after the interface is loaded. In other words, it is the first piece of code our application run. 
and here I'm gonna call the method populate matrix. This means that now every car has an image assigned to it. Why do we do this? We do this so we have an image to display when we click on a specific car. So to do that, we are going to add a listener to the cars so the image behind the car is rendered when you click on it. Just a reminder, a listener is a piece of code that will get executed when a specific event happens. In this case, we want to create a listener that is triggered when we click on a card. And the car is an image view in our user interface. So I will create a method that I'm going to call card listener with a parameter of type mouse event. And inside the method, we will put the code that should be executed when an image view is clicked. For now, let's print out a message saying card was clicked. Perfect. So we have the listener. So let's bind it with the image view. To do so, I will say image view dot and then set on mouse press and then the event. And I will use here the method I just created, the car listener method. The event is a variable containing information about the component that was clicked. So let's run this. And as you can see, if I press any of the cards, which are image view components, then our message is printed. Okay, so we got the listener working. What do we want to do inside the listener? We need to work out the cell that was pressed and then use our board or image matrix to work out the image that is behind that card and then display the image. Let's see how to achieve all this. To help me work out the cell that was pressed, I'm going to add a stream to each image view containing each row and each column. So at this point, when I'm creating the image view, I will say image view dot and then set user data. And then I'm going to pass a stream and this string will contain the row and the column of that cell separated by a comma. Now I can use this piece of information in the listener. So let's see how. So in the listener, I will say event.getSource and this will return a node. This node is the image view which has been clicked. So now I can get the user data for this component. So I will say source component dot and get user data. This will return a string with the row and the column separated by a comma. So let's print the row and the column here. And let's run it now to make sure all we did so far is working. And um, awesome. As you can see, when I press a card, a message is printed with the row and the column that was pressed. So I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, I will show you how to complete the listener and how to restart the game when you press the start again button. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.